stupid input delay. You know what? There's a better way. Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. No one can deny that the mister on a 1440p monitor looks amazing. But it doesn't quite feel right. And that's where this comes in. This is a CRT I picked up at a garage sale. The only problem is that it only has composite input. The mister outputs RGB over the HDMI or you can output RGB over analog. Now obviously on this flat panel we're using HDMI. On a CRT we could use RGB but we would have to mod it. This CRT can't be RGB modded. But it does have an internal DVD player. And that DVD player is hooked up via S-Video. So we can hijack that and put an S-Video port on this TV to get a slightly higher and for the purposes of the SNES, a lot better than composite video signal. So today, we're gonna open it up, take a look at the motherboard, and we'll see if we can add some S-Video to this TV. So, here we have our motherboard. It's very well labeled, and all the spots we need to solder to actually have labels on them. We've got our Chroma, our Luma, and our two audio lines for the S video. Time out. Okay, I made a mistake here. So, I soldered the wires directly to those inputs, the Chroma and the Luma, and it worked fine with original hardware with my SNES and my N64. But I discovered in the next video that it didn't work with my mister, and I spent two weeks diagnosing it, troubleshooting, trying different wires, different spots on the board to solder to, and with the help of people on the CRT Gaming subreddit and the Mr. subreddit, I discovered that I needed grounding resistors soldered before the circuit goes into the TV going to ground, and I used a 75 ohm resistor. So that's similar to what you would do when you're doing an RGB mod. I did not know you had to do it for an S-Video mod because this is the first one I've ever done. I didn't want to leave this video up without disclosing that I made this mistake. So I'm just gonna let you guys get back to the video. But everything else still applies, you just have to have that grounding resistor on the circuit for it to work across the board. For some reason it worked without it with my SNES, but you should put it in. To mount our S-Video connectors, we're going to have to drill a couple holes, two for the audio and one larger one for our S-Video port. Unfortunately this is all one piece, so we are going to have to leave a little bit of slack in our S-Video lines and our audio lines so that we can pull this chassis off of the back of the case whenever we need to open it up and give us some room to work with.
the audio plugs have a grounding washer and we're going to bend it just a little bit so it's not touching the TV when we solder the ground wire onto it. So with each of our signals, audio and video, we've got grounds. So we're going to attach a ground wire linking these two and we'll go down to ground on the board and the bottom pins on this S video are going to both be ground. And for my audio ground I'm going to strip a longer portion than I normally would so I can just link the two together with one wire. So, now that we've got our ground wires in, the hard part, at least hard to film, we're going to have to get our signal wires on.
that's nice and secure. Let's button this back together and see what we got. We've got our Super Nintendo hooked up to our CRT via S-Video. Copy of Super Mario World. And there you have it. We get a nice bump in video quality over composite without the complexity of an RGB mod. I think this is a great beginner mod for people who want to game on a CRT but don't want to settle for the composite input and don't really feel comfortable going for a full-blown RGB mod. But what do you guys think? Are you guys going to go pick up a DVD CRT combo and add some S video ports to it? Let me know down in the comments below. That's all for this video. Hit the like button if you liked the video. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike. And I'll see you in the next one. Oh, come on!